Isaiah finished up nicely yesterday. He finally repented in chapter 14. Ephraim repents. Uh, what have I to do with idols? I'm a green tree. You know, the meanings of some of the words and get more examples and not just hit, you know, three things, but really do a lot. And also um, the worst verb in the universe, which we probably might not even get to today. 99-1. Oh, Yahweh Malach. What is Malach? He's the ruler. He's, he's reigning. Okay. What is the root of your gazoo? Ragaz. That's a very simple verb, and it's easy to see. So this is a modern word, and they use it uh, frequently when the, in the little kids' stories when the kids are fighting or something. They ask the question, Ata Barogez E.T., are you mad at me? Ata Barogez E.T., so that's a modern, a modern use of this root. Uh, so let's see, it doesn't uh, mean that the people are angry, though. Uh, we're going to go to Dvarim Bet. Pasuk Esrim Bechamesh. Hayom, Hazer, this day, Achel, I will begin. Tet, what is this tet? To give, okay. It's the, um, it's the construct. I will begin, we might translate it as giving. But it doesn't really mean giving. It means setting in place, and we've talked about that. Okay, so what is he setting in place? Pachad, fear. Yirah is fear. Okay, we have all this kind of fears going on. And who is going to be receiving it? Al Pnei All the, on the faces of the people, right, or in their face, right? Tachet kol hashemayim. Okay, all the nations that are under the heavens are going to be afraid. Asher yishmeun shimcha. What is all this chaz at the end? Your. Yishmeun. Now the nun is just uh, an ancient suffix, so we don't have to worry about it. So what is yishmeu? Who is that for? They will hear shimcha of your, like the rumors of you, okay, the, the news of you, also from Shema. They will hear the hearing of you what's been heard about you. And they're also going to be ragaz. So ragaz uh, means shaking, but also it's another fear. And the uh, chalu comes from writhing in pain because of you. All right, so what's happening here are, you know, the people are coming into the land. This is Deuteronomy, Moses delivering his summation of everything that's happened in the past 40 years or more. And now he's going to bring them into the land, and God says, I'm going to put the fear of you on all these people when you go into the land. Let's look at uh, Shmuel Bet, uh, Perak Yud Chet. So what happened? He's dead. You see, what's his activity? He's going up oh, the attic or the upper chamber. That's the alit. He's going up because it's also of the gate. And he's crying. And he's over and over again, oh, my son, my son, my son, Absalom, Absalom, my son, my son, my son. And then he said, and what is, what is he saying? Mi yitain muti ani techa. Mi yitain, set in place, right, muti, my death, ani techa, in your place. Only if I had died in your place. David was not a good father, and he had a bunch of rotten kids, because he didn't properly discipline them. I I have to assume. Ragaz here reflects his emotional state, that he is deeply shaking. I, he's not in fear, but sometimes we might say he's moved. He's deeply, deeply moved. There's a cognate, which I think, which is regesh. And hitrak shoot means to be uh, all kind of excited, and that sounds like a frog mm -hmm. and toad thing. But it is a, it's a cognate, right? You yeah. see how the Zion moves to the shin. So this is expressing his feeling that he's deeply moved by it. Mizmor, Zion, Zion. Yeah, seventeen. Seventeen. Mrau, who is seeing? They saw. They saw. Who is seeing? The they. Who is the they? The water. <laughs> Why is it not Elohim? Elohim doesn't appear with a plural verb. Rashi bara Elohim, mm -hmm. right? Elohim is plural, but it always appears with a singular word when it's referring to our God. The waters saw God. I wonder what they were thinking when they saw that. Okay, they saw him, Yachilu, here's your chul, they're writhing about. Af, af here means like even. It looks like the same word as nose, but it has another meaning, af. Even the tihamot, the deep depths are turning, trembling. Shaking, okay? Rogues.
Okay, uh, one more Yeshayahu. Yud Gimel, Pasuk Shalosh Yisrei. All can, therefore, Shemayim Argiz. So here's your same root. What uh, binyan is it? He feel. So he's causing it to shake. He's going to cause the heavens to shake. Vatir Ash Haaretz. So this is also a, a bit of a kavit. Ra'ash. Do you remember what Ra'ash is? Noise. But it's also used for the word for earthquake, which is also a shaking. And, and it makes a big noise. Okay, so he's going to shake the earth. Mi mikoma. From its place. I don't want to be on the planet when it starts flying off in another direction. It's not going to be fun. Okay, we did this Evrat. Do you remember? Uh, Your outpouring anger. of wrath. It's an outpouring of wrath. Who is outpouring their wrath? Yehovah Tzavaot, and also the Yom Charon Apo, on the his day of anger. his burning his nose, anger. his hot nose, right? On the day of his wrath, okay? So these are all uh, ideas of regas. It's a, it's a shaking and it's a fear. Uh, ragash is more in the, in the emotional realm. Uh, and Ra'ash is also a shaking, but it's a noise. Or an earthquake. So they're all kind of a bit related. Psalm 99, he's, he rules. He's going to shake the nations, or the nations are shaking in fear. Yoshev, uh, he is sitting. Keruvim, do you remember the Keruvim? Cherubim. The cherubim. Okay, so that's a, a transliteration that somebody made, I don't know, in the distant past from Karu to cherub. They just took the letters and they made a word out of it. There were no cherubim before Hebrew. Now, this is very interesting. This tanut <coughs> comes from nut. It's the only place that it's used ever. And it means to be moved. But there's many places where it says the earth will not be moved. A mem vav tet, to move. And this is a nun vav tet. But the whole concept of it is backwards. Because usually we think of the earth not being moved. The God says it won't be moved. But here it says it will be moved. So this is a lot of um, God is... Uh, is going to shake everything. Verse 2 of 99. All right. Yehovah B'Tzion. Where is he? In Zion. Gadol. The great. What, what's great? What is great? What is the Gadol, the adjective? What is the noun? Yeah. Yahweh. Yahweh is great in Zion. Yahweh is great in Zion. So Ram, this, we're going to spend a lot of time on this. So the root is room. And it means to lift up. I figure if we spend a lot of time on a word, you might learn it. So in modern Hebrew, if we're in class as a class command, and I ask a question and I want to know who knows the answer, I will say what? Harimu et hayad. Harimu is a command form, or politely tarim, tarimu et hayad. So it's a literal, it's a literal raising. Okay? But here, <coughs> Ram who? He is, he is lifted up, he is exalted. I'll call ha'amin. On or above. above. All right, Ram, let's see. Bereshit, Bereshit Zion. Pasuk Shva Esrei. Hamabul. The flood, Arba'im Yom, Al Ha'aretz. Yirbu Hamayim, a lot of water. The waters increase, they multiply. <clears throat> and Yisu. So what is the root of Yisu? Nasa. So this is also a lifted up, and we'll probably... We will see them sometimes in conjunction. Both we'll might look for that. Okay, what is lifted up here? What is lifted up? The ark. The ark, the teva. And what happened? Taram me'al ha'aretz. It's lifted up. What's being lifted up? The ark. How do you know? Singular and what else? Teva, what is it? It's feminine. Feminine. Okay, it's conjugated for a feminine noun. Right, she is lifted up. That is the teva. This has uh, the connotation of carry. And Ram does not. But we're going to do lots and lots, and so we'll get all the feeling of it. Breshit Yedalad, Pasuk Esrim Bishtayim. Who's speaking? Avram. What does his name mean? Yes, who say great father? Av is father. Ram is exalted. That's a very funny name for a man who has no children. Who is he talking to? The king of Sodom. And what does he say? Harimoti Yadi. So why is he lifting his hand? He's lifting his hand to... To Yehovah. What does that mean to lift your hand? What is what is he saying basically? I'm giving He's my taking words. an oath. Oh. Right. Yeah. El Elyon, the most high God, Kone Shamayim Va'ar. The owner, the possessor, 
of heaven and earth. He didn't buy it, he made it. In modern Hebrew, it means to buy, um, but we don't use it in biblical Hebrew. We use it to pay for something, shalom. But it means that the owner or the possessor. You have this word, ken, is the nest of the bird. Okay, that's all the bird owns is his nest. Bereshit, lamed aleph. Arba'im v'chamesh. What did he take? A stone. And what did he do? He lifted it up, not hanging from the sky. What, what was that where we, we saw the orange tree hanging in the sky? That was in Jaffa. That was in Jaffa. But this is not what Jacob, this is not what Jacob is doing. He's standing it up to make a what? A matseva. What is a matseva? A standing pillar. Putting it up for a pillar. Okay, so he lifted it up. Shemot yedalim. Pasuk shmona. So what happened? Chazak? What did he strengthen? The heart of Pharaoh left Paro. And so he made a decision. Yer Duff. Chasing down and tackling B'nai Yisrael. And the B'nai Yisrael, Yotzim, they are going out. Bayad Rama. What does that mean? Rejoicing? Mine is translated as with boldness. To do something with a high hand. Uh, we're going to see. What uh, they're not sneaking. We'll see what else it's going to mean because it's going to mean something else. Shemot, Tetvav, Pasuk Shtayim, Aromemenhu. So ordinarily you would have the Ah would be by itself, the Rom would be by itself, and then you would have the Menhu. But because there's two Mems in a row, you have to pronounce the Shva under the first one, Aromemenhu. Arom Mimenhu. Just a small sound there, okay? All right. Uziva Zimartya. My strength, what? Yahweh is my strength and my song. Vayihili Lishua. He has become my salvation. Ze'eli. This is my God. Va'anvehu. I will say beautiful things about him. Elohe Avi. The God of my fathers and what? I will exalt him. So we have also this meaning very frequently for Ram. It is to be exalted. Shemot, Tet Zion, next page. Pasuk Esrim. Now this, is, this one is uh, quite a bit different. And this is the only time this is used like this. It's a bit funny, but you'll see how it goes together. So what was the first bad move they made? Lo Shamu. They didn't listen. They were not obedient to, to Moses. The Yotiru, Yeter. They left some over. They, left, they had a leftover. What are we talking about? Manna, okay, the Anashimimimenu, from it, whatever that it is, is of the manna. Adboker, till the morning. And what happened? Yarum tolaim. It raised up tolaim. It raised up worms. Oh, stunk. It stunketh. And yiktsaf alehem Moshe. Ketsef is also anger, another word for anger. Moses was angry with them. So this is the idea. So it's not exactly exalted or lifted up, but we see the worms coming up from it because. Uh, but overnight, mm. now that has to be God. I don't know anything that raises up worms overnight. Shemot, lamid hey, esrim va'arba. There are times where that little stop in your throat will make a difference in in listening uh, for the meaning. It is critical, not ever in English. But in Hebrew, it could be critical, okay? So if you're just going to say a vowel by itself in English, ooh, you're automatically going to make that stop in your throat, ooh. And so we need that hey, V, and then we need to stop at hey, V, ooh, not hey, V, you, okay? Because if we put the Y there and we just say you, then it could blend in, okay? Hey, V, ooh. What is hey, V, ooh? They brought. So everybody's bringing things, talking about bringing things to make the... Uh, Tabernacle, right? So, call Merim Terumah. So this is where the Terumah offering comes from. Uh, no, it's a lifted up offering, not a wave offering. So he's bringing the Terumah, the Kesef, the Nehoshet. Uh, so, and they're also, what else are they bringing besides these um, precious metals? Atse Shittim. Shittim wood is sometimes translated as acacia. Okay, so all, they're bringing all these things, whatever each one has. Asher nimtza ito, whatever is found with him for the work. Devarim, Aleph, Pasuk esrim vishmone. Ana anachnu olim. 
No, it's not an answer. Answers with an ayin. This ana, it can mean where or how. How are we going to go up? What are they worried about? Well, let's find out. Hemasu et levavenu. They caused our hearts to melt. Our hearts are melting. Who caused their hearts to melt? Who caused them to melt? The spies, the lying spies, Achenu, our brothers. And this is what they said, Am gadol v'ram mimenu. It is a people, and ram, they're tall people, okay? They're great. Then us, arim gedolot, uvtsurot, large cities, and what else are they? What is vitsurot? It like makes it strong, fortified, yeah. right? They're fortified by Shemayim, all the way up into heaven, right? And also, the B'nai Anakim, sons of the Anakim Ra'inu Sham. We saw. Now, the Anakim, the root idea is related to their necks, so they're long-necked people. You know about the Maasai people? Oh. That what they do... Yeah. When they're born, oh, yeah. the babies oh, yeah, are born, yeah, they, they put, put the these rings, things around rings so that their necks yeah. are very long. Now, like where would they have gotten a stupid idea like that? <laughs> Maybe they were they looking at the like Anakin. The Maybe they have a mythology yeah. in their yeah. legends that people came from the sky and they had long necks and we want to be looking like them. Yeah. Ram, <laughs> lifted up, <laughs> exalted, the true ma. Okay, homework. Find yeah. out find out what kind of offering is the truma. Look it up, see where you find it, see if there's anything special about it. What a truma offering is. It's called a truma. It comes from this room.